Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm looking at what might be the world's cheapest air gun scope. Given the title of the video, let's not beat around the bush. This unbranded scope cost me just £3.55. It's brand new, came with mounts and included free postage from China where it was made. Now given that price, I'm expecting it to be very basic and I'm under no illusions as to the quality. Um, so I'm not actually going to be using it other than just for this video. Uh, I only bought it because I wanted to see what it was like and I needed a disposable scope for another upcoming video I've got. Now, it, I just can't believe you can buy a scope for that price. If you think of the nature of the product it is, you've got the cost of the raw materials, the labour, the manufacturing processes and the packaging, and then post-sale you've got selling costs, additional packaging, and then the cost of shipping it halfway around the world. It's just amazing. And to put that into context, um, at the point I bought this, it would have cost a minimum of £2.80 just to post the thing within the UK. Now I should point out this is actually the second cheapest scope I could find online. Uh, there was one that was very slightly cheaper which I did order uh, but it never arrived. The company sent or at least claimed they sent another one and that also never arrived so that slightly cheaper one may or may not exist. Um, at this point it's just kind of Schrodinger's rifle scope. Um, but enough about the scope that I didn't get and let's have a closer look at the one I did which may be the world's cheapest scope. It comes in quite a plain black and silver box with very little writing on it other than rifle scope on two sides and the specification on one end. Uh, there's no manufacturer's name or branding or anything. So the box is a little bit battered. It's just thin cardboard and it arrived just in a jiffy bag. So opening it up, the scope is just in a thin bit of bubble wrap. And from this small one piece leaflet that comes with it, we can see that this is designed for 2.2 caliber rifles and air guns. And I'm assuming that by 2.2 caliber rifles, they're referring to 2.2 long rifle, which is a relatively low powered rimfire cartridge. So looking at the scope itself, uh, it is 27 centimeters long and it's rather light, weighing just under 100 grams. Now the main body of the scope is metal, uh, which I was quite surprised about. Most of these cheap 4x20s are all plastic, but that's not to say there isn't still plenty of plastic on it. Um, this main focusing eye bell and all of the adjustment turret assembly is all plastic. Now it has a satin black finish with no markings on it other than 4x20. Uh, so what does that 4x20 mean? So this scope has a 4 power magnification and it has a 20 millimeter or two centimeter objective lens, which is this lens at the front. And the larger the objective lens, the more light that's let in, but also the bigger and heavier it is. So 20 millimeters is about as small as you're generally gonna find on a scope these days. In terms of reticle, it has duplex crosshairs, which you can see here. You can adjust the focus of the scope by turning the eyepiece. It does then have a locking ring to keep it in place, but there isn't actually anything to stop you removing the entire eyepiece and therefore exposing the crosshair and internals of the scope. So for that reason I'm guessing that this scope isn't fog or weatherproof. So whilst you can adjust the normal focus you can't adjust the parallax on this scope. Now I'm not sure what the parallax is set to. Uh, most low power fixed parallax scopes are set to around 100 yards but it doesn't give you that information in the sheet that comes with it. Um, for zeroing the scopes you have the usual elevation dial on top and windage dial at the side which is just covered by little protective caps. So as you can see the dials are very basic and you can, might be able to hear they don't have any kind of incremental clicks um, and there's no minute of angle given for the adjustment um, so zeroing is purely trial and error and as you probably just saw from my screwdriver then um, that these are coin or screwdriver adjustable only they can't be adjusted by hand 
uh, the very brief leaflet that comes with it basically tells you in slightly broken English to adjust it until you hit your target. So understandably I wasn't filled with confidence for zeroing the scope but I have played around with it a bit before the video and it actually wasn't too bad to zero and for information on how to zero a scope I do have a video on that subject which I'll put a link to in the description below. As I mentioned earlier the scope does come with mounts which are already on the scope. Uh, they're just very basic set of two mounts with only one screw per mount for attaching to the gun and one screw per mount for securing the scope into the mounts. And now those screws are Phillips head rather than Allen or hex screws which you usually find on the scope mounts and other than the screws there are no separate moving parts for holding the scope or attaching it to the gun. And what I mean by that is that on most conventional mounts such as these on this other scope um, this top piece of the mount actually comes off and is fixed on both sides to apply even pressure uh, to the scope tube and it has a separate piece for uh, clamping the scope onto the scope rail. So on these cheap mounts uh, you just rely on the screw tightening and therefore I suppose bending the metal um, to clamp it onto the gun and to clamp the scope tube in place. Um, and that's not ideal. So whilst the mounts are metal, they are um, pretty thin and don't seem like the best quality. Uh, just in the very short time I've been using, you can see here that the screw has started already cutting into the metal where it's been tightened. So here it is mounted on a rifle. Now I had my concerns as to how um, it would feel mounted, but it does feel sturdy enough. Although admittedly I've not shot it a massive amount, but it doesn't seem to have moved on the scope rail so far. So the last thing to show you bef uh, quickly before I move on to do some testing is whilst the scope doesn't come with any adjustment tools or a cleaning cloth or anything, it does come with a pair of lens caps. Now these are just very basic and flimsy, um, but they do the job just fine. Uh, they're quite small and not attached to the scope or to each other, so I imagine they could get easily lost, especially out in the field, but they do seem to be a tight enough fit to stay on. So now you've seen the scope up close and I've mounted it on a rifle, I think it's time we did some shooting with it. So in order to test its accuracy, I'm going to do a direct comparison with my trusty Nico Sterling scope here. This is a 3 to 9 by 40 AO IR scope with a recommended retail price of 86.99, and I do actually have a separate review of that scope, so I'll put a link to that in the description below in case you're interested. Now to keep the test as scientific as possible, I'm going to keep everything the same apart from the scope. So same gun, pellets, targets and distance. So I'll be using my Remington Express rifle here in 177 with these 10.65 grain H&N Sport Barracuda match pellets at a distance of around 12 metres. And I'm going to start actually with the Nico Sterling scope to lay down a benchmark. Here I have my target. Now the pellets are slightly off centre, but that's okay, it's just because I need to zero the scope. Um, what I'm looking for here in terms of accuracy is group size. So the group is just under two and a half centimetres, or just under an inch, and all of the pellets are relatively tight within that. Now I'm happy with the accuracy. Uh, I'm now going to put the cheap scope on and repeat the test. Here I have that target. So the group has now increased to just under four centimetres, or around an inch and a half. 
Now the pellets are relatively evenly spread throughout that group. Um, there are no obvious strays, um, but it's not that nine of them have gone through one hole with one just hitting an inch away or anything. So the accuracy is clearly not as good as the Nikko Sterling scope, uh, but let's face it, it was never going to be. We all knew that before I started. But what I really wanted to see was just how big a difference there was. Now it's added half an inch or so to the grouping, which would obviously increase at greater distances, but it's not completely terrible, which begs the question, is it better than nothing? Um, well, let's find out. So I'm now going to remove the scope and do a third test using just the Remington Express's open sights. Here I have my final target from using the open sights. Now all 10 pellets are within this red three point ring um, with the overall grouping being five centimeters or two inches. Now whilst seven of the pellets are either in or touching this inner five point ring, the pellets are still spread within the group. So the accuracy with open sights is definitely inferior to using this cheap scope. In fact, the difference between open sights and this scope is roughly the same as between this scope and the Nikko Sterling scope. So there you've seen what might be the world's cheapest scope. Now at £3.55, is it worth it? Well, yes and no. Um, the fact that it's not completely terrible and that it definitely improves accuracy over open sites, uh, purely in terms of monetary value, of course it is, how can it not be? The problem is I just wouldn't spend £3.55 on a scope and therefore any money you spend on one of these instead of a better scope is going to be a waste of money. Um, if you need a scope and you're on a very tight budget and this is genuinely all you can afford then it is better than nothing and other than maybe uh, build quality and therefore probably durability it's not significantly worse than a £10 or £15 scope with similar features. I should really stress though that this review is based on relatively little use um, for which it seemed okay but I wouldn't really like to speculate on how well it would hold up over a longer period of time or more rigorous use. Now whilst I'm not necessarily advocating this, uh, one use I can think of for a scope like this is if you're selling a second hand gun. Uh, if you put one of these on and the fact that your gun comes with a brand new scope regardless of what type it is, it's probably going to add more than £3.55 to your asking price. Now, as said in the introduction, I do actually have another video planned for this scope, um, so when that's uploaded, I'll put a link to that in the description below. So thanks for watching, hope you found the video interesting. Uh, if so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury, and until next time, keep your arms in the air.